Welcome to How to Use Rules and Alerts to Focus on Emails That Matter. Email can be a great method of communication, but it can also be a source of distraction and frustration. In this lesson, we'll show you how to reduce distractions from routine email alerts and configure Microsoft Outlook to only alert you when important emails from important people arrive. As a bonus, we'll also show you how to use conditional formatting to make email from selected senders automatically change their appearance in your inbox so they stand out from everything else. In this lesson, we'll cover features available from Microsoft Outlook on Windows. Hello and welcome to Using Rules and Alerts to Focus on Emails that Matter. Today we'll cover Outlook Rules, Outlook Alerts, and Conditional Formatting. I'm Ivy Gray from WordRake, and I'm with Baron Henley from Affinity Consulting. Are you ready, Baron? Take it away. Hi, my name is Baron Henley, and today we're going to talk about using Microsoft Outlook um, and specifically its features called Rules and Alerts and an, another feature which is called Conditional Formatting, all of which are designed to allow you to keep track of who's sending you emails and make the ones that you, you care about stand out. Now to kind of frame this discussion in one of the earlier classes, um, we discussed the, I would argue, wisdom of turning off all the notifications in Outlook. Because if you get a notification pop up every single time you get an email from anybody, um, it's pretty distracting. So um, as you may recall, if you saw that earlier class, you get to those settings by clicking the file menu in Outlook down to options on the left side. And then you click on mail on the left side. So file options mail. And if you scroll down, message arrival here is these at least three of the four boxes are checked by default. And these are what cause all the little pop ups and notifications whenever you get an email. So um, we recommend unchecking all of these things so that you're not, uh, your door isn't being knocked on every time anybody sends you an email. And you can uncheck all of these, but still be notified when certain people send you emails. That's the important thing. So I wanted to show you um, an easy way to do that. So let's say I turned off, as I have done, all of my notifications. But I want to know if Elise Baker um, sends me an email. So um, the, the, the way I could do that, there's a couple of ways, but I just wanted to show you an easy way to be notified when a particular person sends you um, an email. So if I want Elise, uh, I want a notification when Elise sends me an email, all I do is I click on an email she already sent me. It doesn't matter what folder it's in. I'm in my inbox right now, but it, it's irrelevant. Then on your home ribbon, there's a rules button. If you click on the rules button and you go down to simply create rule, a dialogue will appear that makes this very easy. When I get an email with all the following selected conditions from Elise, what do you want to do? Play a noise and display a new item alert. Click OK, and that's it. You're done. You will now get both a noise and a new item alert, or you can choose one or the other whenever Elise sends me an email, even though I've told Outlook, don't tell me when people send me an email. Okay, so this will override that, at least for her. Now, the, the drawback of this is that I, I have to do a new rule for each person. There's a way um, to make one rule that captures a whole bunch of people if you want to do that. So in that case, you click on the rules button again, but instead of create rule, go down to manage rules and alerts. So if I click on manage rules and alerts, all right, now I already have some rules, which I'm going to explain in a minute. But what you want to do here is say, I want to do a new rule. So you click on this button right here and it will they have templates for rules so a rule a rule can do things other than just notify you that somebody sent you an email you can also use them and most people use them i think for filing things away so <clears throat> um, i can say i usually ignore just so you can see what all their options are ignore their templates and just come down here to the bottom and say start a from a blank rule and apply this rule to messages i receive I click next. Now, inside this dialogue, and I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better, there is a crazy number of options for intercepting an email. In other words, criteria you can set up that would identify this email as one subject to the rule I'm creating right now. So most of the time, it's, you know, it's gonna be from a certain person. 
So let's say that if um, Elise Baker at PlackerLaw.net sends me an email, I just check this box at the top, from people in a group or, or a public group. I check this box, and as you can see, it added, it's building my rule down here as I check off criteria up here. So I'm going to click on people or public group, and I can now pick people out of my address book, or I can just type them here in the from. So I could type Elise, Elise.Baker at PlackerLaw.net. And I, here's the nice thing. I can say semicolon space, and I can add as many email addresses as I want. There's no limit. So I could put 35 email addresses all in this one rule. I'm going to just do Elise for right now. So I do Elise Baker at PlackerLaw.net. I click OK, and then I click Next. What do you want to do if you get an email from Elise Baker? Okay, let's say I was, I'll start, first of all, with, with what a lot of people use these for. I want to move that email to a specified folder. Let's say Elise is involved in a case I'm, in, I'm working on. I've created a folder over here for that case, and I want any emails from her to automatically go into that folder. All right, so the benefit there is um, normally people are creating folders, which is a great idea. And you're segregating your email by case or matter or whatever. Um, and then people tend to drag them out of their inbox into that folder. This is basically gonna do that for me. So if I say move to a specified folder, as soon as I check that, it adds it to my rule. I can click on specified and it'll show me all of my folders that I've made. So let's say that I'm working with her on the Virginia State Bar Tech Show. So I click on that, I click OK. OK, see how now it says, if you get an email from Elise Baker at PlackerLaw.net, move it to the VSB Tech Show folder. I click Next. Is there any exceptions to this rule? And there's every kind of exception you could possibly imagine. I don't have any, so I'm going to leave them all blank. I click Next, and it asks me to name the rule. So I could call this you know, the File Away rule, because now anytime Elise Baker sends me an email, it's going to go right into the VSB Tech Show folder. OK, now let me back up. Some people are not comfortable with that, moving it, because it, it's not going to show up in your inbox, right? It went directly, it hit your inbox for a nanosecond, and then immediately went to the folder you told it to go to. So what you can do instead, and what a lot of people prefer instead of move, they say move a copy to the specified folder. And if I say move a copy to the specified folder, it'll leave the original in my inbox, but also put a copy in the folder. So I can deal with the one in my inbox and go ahead and delete it after I've read it, knowing that a copy is already in the folder I would have drug it to anyway. So maybe that's a little bit safer if you like to still work out of your inbox and don't want to worry about something being filed away and you accidentally missing it, even though it would come in as an unread message. So you definitely have a bold number out to the right identifying that there is an unread message in that particular thing. But just so you can see some of the other things you can do here, I can delete it, which puts it in your deleted items. I can permanently delete it, which puts, it's not even in your deleted items. It's like shift delete. That person sends you an email. You don't even know it was just deleted. You can forward emails automatically to other people. I've set up rules where, you know, every time I got an email from a particular organization or person, it needed to be forwarded to somebody else. So I just set up a rule to do that. So I wouldn't have to keep doing it manually. Um, and very importantly down here, you can play a sound or you can do a desktop alert. Okay, so these are um, additional options for being notified, not just moving something or forwarding it or deleting it or something like that. So let's say, for example, that if, um, if I'm going to create a rule, I just want to show you what this looks like for notification purposes. I'm going to create a rule and I'm going to say, apply it to messages I receive next from people in a particular group. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say from my personal email address. BK Henley at Gmail, just so we can test this and you can see what it looks like. So if I get an email from BK Henley at gmail.com next, what do you want to do? I want to display a desktop alert and to make it even more obnoxious, I can say display a specific message in the new item alert window. So I check this. So I'm doing two things. I'm getting two kinds of alerts. I could also say annoy me with a sound, but I'm not going to display a specific message. So I click on a specific message and I could say, you know, Baron sent you an email. That's going to be the message. So I click OK. I hit next. Are there any exceptions? No, I hit next. We'll just call this the test rule. And I hit finish.
Okay, now, when I click OK, now I'm gonna send myself an, an email, all right? So I'm gonna send it from my Gmail address, which I can also do from Outlook, to my work address. So this will be test and test, and I'm gonna hit send. Now, whenever that shows up, you're gonna see two different kinds of notifications show up. I don't know how long this is gonna take, let's see here. All right, send receive. And it'll pop up in a second, hopefully. Yeah, the waiting is the hardest part. Okay, it'll eventually show up. And you're gonna see, and there it is. Okay, so see this, Baron sent you an email, blah, blah, blah. And that is, I'm not sure what happened to my follow-up down here. Let me go in and look at that rule again. I should have gotten an additional um, notification. Did I check both of those tests? Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> okay, so you can, you can change your rule, edit rule settings. Okay, only on this computer from, and I hit next. Display a desktop alert. Oh, I did have display a desktop alert, but for some reason I didn't get a desktop alert. Or possibly it was behind the window, which sometimes happens. Um, oh, here it is. Ah, so there it is. So this is my desktop alert. I just had a bunch of them in here already. So it was just kind of queuing them up. But here is the, um, the desktop alert as well. So I can hit delete on that and I can hit delete on this. So there's a bunch in here that I hadn't been paying attention to. Once this is empty, like if I send a new one, it will pop up down here and I will see it. So in that case, I got two obnoxious notifications of an email from me to me, but that could have been anybody, right? So anyway, I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna go back to rules and down to manage rules and alerts. You can, of course, turn off a rule after you've started it, um, or you can just simply say, I don't want that rule anymore. What other people, you, another, another thing you can do when you create a new rule, just so you know, you can apply a rule to messages you send as well. So let's say I've already got a rule that says if this if if Elise Baker sends me a, an email, I want it to go into a folder. I could also say if I send Elise an email, I want a copy to go into the same folder. So you can have a rule that does both things. It, it files stuff that you receive and files stuff that you send. And what some people have done with the apply me, uh, rule on messages I send, if I just set one of those up, I could say through a specified account, and when I click on specified, it'll show me I have two email accounts in Outlook right now, my business and my Gmail. So I'm going to use my, um, my business account. So any email I send through my business email account, next, I could say defer delivery by some number of minutes. And you could, so I could say one minute. You might be wondering, why would somebody do that? Because some, you know, sometimes you click send and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Or I clicked send too fast. Or I forgot this attach an attachment, this will cause it to sit in your outbox for 60 seconds before it goes, which I know that doesn't sound like a long time, but hold your breath for 60 seconds. It's a long time. Um, that would give you the opportunity. If you click send, you're like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. You can go in your outbox, click on it and hit delete and it won't go anywhere. So it's just going to sit there. And the reason I don't have that turned on actually is because I found 60, 60 seconds to be just way too long. Um, as an extremely impatient person, I simply, even though it provides some measure of protection, <laughs> I just couldn't wait 60 seconds. It drives me crazy. A lot of times I'm on a web meeting with somebody and I'm trying to send them something and I don't want it to take 60 seconds. I just want it to show up. So anyway, if you, if you aren't suffering from impatience as I do, then this might be a good idea if you just want to make sure that uh, if, you, if you're quick on the trigger when it comes to clicking send, that could save you. Okay, so I have another idea for you. Let's say, uh, yeah, well, I, I just don't want notifications, but you know, I get a lot of emails and I would like to be able to look at my email and, say, and know immediately when important people send me emails, not relying upon rules and alerts. Okay, there's a way to do that. So let's say I'm gonna take um, Mike Lurie's email address here. If Mike sends me, so it's Mike at Lurie Law, what is his email address? Mike at LurieLawOffice.com. So, if Mike sends me an email, I don't want his emails to show up as just regular emails. I want them to be much bigger in terms of their font. I want them to be bold and I want them to be red. Okay, there's a, there's a thing you can do in Outlook 
that you can set up any criteria you want and it will recolor, change the font, change the point size of any particular email. All right. So this is all, it's called conditional formatting. And you get to it by clicking on the view ribbon and then click on the gear right here that says view settings. And you're going to see there's a button inside the next dialog that says conditional formatting. Again, I'm on the view ribbon, view settings, conditional formatting. So I click on conditional formatting. So why are my unread messages look, looking like this? This font and this point size and this color? Because of the conditional formatting that comes with Outlook. If I didn't want them to be blue, I could click on font and I could choose some other color. So that was a custom color. I could pick any other color if I want them to be purple. When I click OK, all my, um, my email messages will turn purple. Okay, so you can change the default assumptions that Outlook gives you. But let's say I want to create a new thing. If Mike at Lurie Law Office sends me an email, I want an email from him to be obnoxiously obvious in my inbox. So I create, a, I click add and I create a new condition. I'm going to call it the Mike Lurie rule. And the, the font, if he sends me an email, is going to be bold, big, and you can see down here I can make it red. So I'm, I'm making it bold, big, I'm gonna change, same font as everything else, Cgo UI, whatever that means. Bold, big, red, click OK. Now I gotta set up the condition. Click condition, if it comes from Mike at LurieLaw.com, and I click OK. Now, it's gonna process these in the order it encounters them. I have a couple of other conditional formatting things that I put in here that I want Mike Lurie's rule to process first. So I'm gonna click on it and say, move up, move up. That's as, these, these bottom two are the ones I created. It won't let you move this in priority above the default ones that come with Outlook. So that's as high as it'll go. You see the move up button grayed out when I got there. In any event, when I click okay, okay, and I'm not really sure why those didn't change, but let's try that again. Formatting, Mike Lurie. Condition, did I spell his email address from Mike? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, so <laughs> I'm having a great day. How about you? Um, LurieLawOffice.com. <laughs> so I have to actually spell his email address correctly. But now when I click OK, OK, I'm going to guess it's going to work. And there you go. Hey, it worked. So imagine you've got this VIP list of people. And if they send you an email, you want it to be obnoxiously obvious in your inbox. Conditional formatting is the way to go. So I'm not getting pop-ups. I'm not being annoyed, but I can obviously spot Mike's email amongst all the others because it's huge and red and you can make that whatever you'd like it to be. So again, <clears throat> view ribbon, view settings, conditional formatting, and I can always go in here and I can turn that off if I want, or I can simply delete it. Now, one of the ones that I created, and when I click OK, OK, you can see his emails go back to normal. If I go back to that conditional formatting, and so notice that some of my emails are red and some are blue. I created an, an, a condition that says, if I get any email from affinityconsulting.com, which is my company, so it, you don't have to put in individual email addresses. You can just put in the domain name, any prefix at affinityconsulting.com, and this will capture it. I wanted my inbox to reflect emails that come from employees or business partners or anybody inside our company. I want those to show up as red, not blue. So I made a I made this condition and I said, you know, turn it to maroon if it's an internal email. And the condition was simply that it was sent, it was from anything at affinityconsulting.com. Furthermore, if I get a, a so my personal, my personal Gmail address also comes into my inbox. It's mostly garbage. So I wanted to be able to spot anything that was sent to my personal email address by color in my inbox. So I made another rule that automatically turns those green. So if I sent, if I sent myself an email, who knows how long this will take. Um, so if I say BK Henley, if I send this test email, um, to myself, um, then since I sent it to my Gmail account, whenever that shows up, um, it'll turn green. 
So I'll be able to tell, oh, I, well, okay, I had two rules in conflict there. My first rule was that an internal email from Affinity Consulting turns red. <laughs> and because of the order, so this is actually illustrates a good thing. If I go back to the view settings and I go on conditional formatting, see the affinity rule is ahead of the Gmail rule. So it's gonna turn it red first. But if I moved up the Gmail rule, then see how my email just turned green? That's why. So the, 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 the order they appear, it, the first time it encounters a rule that would affect a particular email, that's the one that go governs. So all I did was change their order. And now that email coming to my personal email address turned green as I intended it to. Anyway, between the rules and the alerts and the conditional formatting, you can really help organize your inbox. You can file stuff automatically. You can get the notifications you want, even though you've shut them all off. And if you want certain people's email to really look different in your inbox or any other folder, you can totally do that with conditional formatting. Okay. I hope those were good tips for you. And thanks for watching. Thanks so much, Baron. I'm sure everyone will learn so much from this video and outlook. This video was created by Ivy Gray from Wargrake and Baron Henley from Affinity Consulting, who both trained as lawyers and are now Microsoft Word and Outlook enthusiasts and productivity experts. This video is part of a series. To sign up to receive tech tips and training videos via email, please visit wordrake.com slash tech tips. Take Outlook to the next level. If you want emails from you to be considered emails that matter, even to busy, distracted readers, then you must write better emails. Let WordRake help you improve the quality, clarity, and brevity of the emails you send in Microsoft Outlook. Our software uses complex, patented algorithms to find needless words, weak lead-ins, cliches, dull phrases, redundancies, unnecessary modifiers, and more. It presents its editing suggestions in the familiar track changes style. WordRake can make any email clearer, shorter, and better. If you'd like to learn more, sign up to receive tech tips and training videos at wordrake.com slash tech tips. When you're ready to take your work to the next level, try Wordrake. Wordrake is clear and concise editing software that will improve your writing while respecting legally operative phrases and key legal content. It's a finely tuned collaborator that will help you satisfy clients, win more business, and do more high value work. WordRate works in Microsoft Word and Outlook. It goes beyond Microsoft's built-in spelling and grammar checkers to help you reduce legalese and wordy writing. It uses complex, patented algorithms to find useless words, dull phrases, weak lead-ins, cliches, and high-level grammatical problems, then offers suggested edits in line. WordRate's document will look just like a smart colleague with an English degree has revised your work using track changes. In three simple steps, you'll have a better document or email. Try it today at wordrake.com slash trial.